Okay, let's begin our material animations with animating an area light and specifically the brightness of that area light. I will admit that I really enjoy using area lights in my animations. I think they give you a lot of freedom and they create some really nice looking results. So I'm gonna take you through how to animate an area light. Now, first of all, we need to add an area light to our scene because we don't have one. We're gonna do this by hitting Control and five on the keyboard. That's gonna add a plane and I'm going to move it up, scale it up so it's a little bit larger and move it off to the side so we can use it as a light. That should do. And I also want to add a ground plane for best results. So I hit Control G and I'm gonna make this a diffuse plane and I'll set it to white. And I guess to give it a little bit more of a realistic finish, we'll go to plastic instead of diffuse. I'll go to more like a light gray and a roughness of 0.1. That should be good for now. We need to turn our plane into an area light. So double click it and choose the area light light source. We don't see a lot of the results from this because our environment is simply too bright. So let's take that environment all the way down to zero and hit enter. And now we've got our area light. Now the shadows are pitch black because we have no other ambient light in our scene. If you want to have a little bit of extra light in your scene, you can increase the brightness of your HDRI. And notice now we've got kind of a dark gray shadow. 0.01 may be a little more appropriate. What can we do with this? First of all, we can turn off back of geometry so it only shines out the front. That's usually a pretty good thing to do. It may help performance slightly, but not significantly. Now, if we want to make it visible to camera, we leave that checkbox on, but we can also turn it off. A lot of people are not totally sure of what visible and reflections means, and it takes a while to get used to this. Now, we don't have any really shiny materials in here, but if we did have some polished metal or a glossy plastic, you would see this plane reflecting in it. If you want a realistic result, always leave visible and reflections on. There's very few times where you wanna turn this off. You can see here on the ground plane, if I turn off visible and reflections, then this reflection disappears. So let's actually get to animating this light. Because we're gonna animate this light using a material animation, we're going to make this easy by getting in the material graph. I will move my camera on over so we can see what's happening here. Now in our material graph is where it's gonna be the easiest to produce our animations for our materials. So if you're not super familiar with the material graph, I recommend you check out my Keyshot Rendering Masterclass or the material graph masterclass I produced, both available on my store. For now, we're going to right click and choose a new node called an animation node. And we only have two options here. We have color fade and we have curve fade. While we could technically use both, we're going to use the curve fade because it's the more appropriate choice in this case. Now a curve fade, if we double click on it, we have an animation accordion, and this is our very familiar green line for our motion easing. And we're gonna plug this into the power socket of the area light. Now, why did it go dark? Well, if we look at the values, we are starting at zero, so it's pitch black. And if we move along this timeline, it goes to one and the plane gets a little brighter. However, if we were to disconnect this and look at the area light, it's setting at a thousand lumen for the brightness. So let's go back into power, go to our curve fade and click on that ending point and change the value to 1000. And now we should be seeing exactly what we saw before. Now we need to click this button here to fit our curve or zoom to fit. And there we go. If we scrub along the timeline, we can see what we get. So this is basically just animating the strength of the brightness of this light. We can swap these values if we wanna go the opposite. So we can type in a thousand for the value. And then we could take this one all the way back down to say zero. And we can do all the same normal adjustments with these curves that you're used to. If we want, we can speed up and slow down that animation by just dragging the bar in the timeline. So it's very flexible and it's very easy to animate both the location of this light because we've already talked about how to use animations such as transforms. Remember, this is a plane that's available in our uh, scene tree. So we can always go in and create an animation and change the location of this item, but we can also control its brightness by getting into its material graph and adjusting this curve fade. So that's how you control the brightness or animate the brightness of an area light.